keep scrolling. <laughs> um, you can find GFP inside of jellyfishes. And um, when you transfer the GFP into um, bacteria, in this case E. coli, it creates a fluorescent, or you basically you can glow, it glows in the dark. Um, and she um, put a picture of what they put transferred GFP into mice, and the mice are green in the, in the light. Um, and basically we used um, a E. coli that's not dangerous. It's, um, I want to say, been disarmed, um, but it's E. coli is found inside of your intestines. Um, don't get alarmed by the amount of materials here. I'll just explain. Um, basically, we created two petri dishes, um, each containing. Oops, sorry. Yeah, the um, everything listed here. All, the only difference: the two petri dishes. One had LB arabinose and um, an AMP, which is um, the updated plasmids, and the other one just had. LB and the updated plasmids. The um, arabinose is just to promote bacterial growth. And um, before we put the bacteria into the um, petri dishes, all you, we did was label um, several containers with a, either minus PG glow or um, plus. And we use an ice bath to keep the um, to keep the bacterial growth at a minimal rate until we are ready to apply them to the petri dishes. Yeah, I'm going to give a little on the use of the ice bath and the water bath. Um, the procedure is called heat and cold shock. So it's like to expand the thing in the, I don't know, in the ice and then to give it a heat shock. To, it's just basically to help the bacteria just open up and accept the plasmid that contains the GFP gene. So this is the procedure. I'm going to go over it one after the other. So we use two micro test tubes. One is um, we label it at negative PGLO and the other one as positive GLO. That's basically because one of the test tubes did not have the GFP and the other one did, the positive did. We use the sterile pipette, which I think I have a picture of it somewhere, I don't know, to transfer 250 picoliters of the transformation liquid into both, both tubes. The transformation liquid is supposed to be NaCl2, but in this case we used water. We place the two tubes on ice. Yeah, that's the cold shock part of the deal. And then do both tubes. The point of the LB broth I may mention later. Okay, we left the two tubes for 10 minutes at room temperature and then mix it together and transfer under picoliters of the liquid that we've been transferring around onto the plates. Remember the plates that we said had, um, one of them had ampicillin and AI arabinos and the other one didn't. So we used them to transfer into the plates. Then to mix it together, we just used another sterile loops. And then we place it in a 37 degree centigrade incubator for about 24 hours. And that's about it. Okay, the thing that happened was we didn't get our own, our desired result because of some kind of human error, I guess. But the undergraduate students in the lab, they did it over to um, show us what it could have been like if it was done in the correct format. And then on the positive PGLO, the one that had the gene, the GFP, the bacteria grew and fluoresced. It glowed on the UV ray. Actually, the E. coli that we used got contaminated, and that's why it didn't grow. On the negative PGLO, it did not. It didn't grow. Want to guess why? Go figure. <laughs> okay. Acknowledgement. Sorry, Dr. Sat. I'm going to apologize if I bring up any. There's a mistake there. Dr. Subhash Minocha, our lovely, lovely mentor, um, the staff members and the undergraduate students at the lab, University of New Hampshire, Dr. Sat, I'm sorry once again, yes. HDS Sat, and Keep priority to the kids in Mexico. Does uh, someone has a question? Alguien tiene una pregunta? We were just we were just talking that it's a very very similar uh, exercise or project that uh, one Orlando was developing here. <laughs> They, 
we used a different method. We used an element. We used electric shock, electroporation, and we used a different method. That was great. <laughs> Um, the reason why we use GFP, we could have used any gen. The reason why we use GFP is so it could be visible, so we could see the results of what we did. Um, this is the whole genetic engineering thing that is going on right now. You transfer certain genes into plants or bacteria to make them have some features that they didn't have naturally. Take, for example, to produce insulin. You can, the moment you recognize the gene that produces insulin in humans, you transfer it into a bacteria. So bacteria produces a lot of insulin to give to um, diabetic patients. So that's the purpose of the whole thing. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. You want me to like go back to the whole procedure? Is that what you want? <laughs>